All right, so just a really quick tutorial about how to scale pieces of armor. Usually I find arm and leg pieces uh, non-uniformly. Uh, so in this case, uh, I have a model that fits this arm pretty decently um, because I am a skinny twig, and that is the arm type that I designed this for. Um, if you are uh, a, like a beefy dude or something, or someone with actual muscles, uh, you can see that the arm is now clipping through your model. So the wrist is still pretty good. Um, but like up here is clearly super, super wonky. So this is how I would usually scale just this upper piece without modifying the wrist. Um, so I have, this is actually like seven individual pieces of armor in here. Uh, and I've just put them in a group so I can edit the group as needed. Uh, so you'll notice that, you know, I could, I could scale this up, but then like this hole is fine, but now my wrist is enormous. Um, I could do this, which doesn't really do anything. So like there's not... Just using the standard, like, axes you find is not really going to help you here. So what I will usually do is use a lattice deformer. Um, I linked a relevant tutorial that I did, uh, sort of similar thing for, like, expanding shoulder straps on armor. Um, so that's in the description if you're interested. It goes over more or less the same thing. Uh, so I'm just going to select, in this case, I'll show, you, I'll show you the wrong way to do it, and then I'll show you the right way to do it. So I'm going to select one of these armor pieces. Going to go up to my deform menu, lattice deformer, open up these tool handles, and for stuff like this, usually I just set it to two. Uh, three, four, like doing doing more divisions will just give you a little bit more control, but I find two usually does me fine. Uh, so I'm going to go through, and you can see there's now a lattice deformer on this one piece. And now I'm free to expand this. Um, so you can see that the wrist is staying the same, but clearly uh, this area down here is getting way more ginormous and horrible looking. Um, but this is kind of an awful way to do things. Uh, for one, I would have to do this seven times for all the pieces, which is just like not something I want to do at all. Um, and two, it's gonna it's gonna jack up all your tolerances. You can already see like there's no easy way to keep the tolerances in place if you're trying to like do all the pieces individually. So not only is this less efficient, it's also pretty pretty dang dangerous. So I'm gonna undo all of that. Um, so in this case, what you want to do is either select all of the pieces uh, and put a lattice deformer on them, or in this case, I usually just like doing the group. It's one thing to click on, feels a little safer. So I'm going to select the group, and again, just apply a lattice deformer to that. And this allows me to go in and scale one side of your armor and make it super aggressive while still having the wrist fit pretty much the way it was before. Um, so I can, you know, go through and like move this a little bit around if I need to. Um, scale this to be pretty much whatever uh, size hole that I need. I could squish it down that way a little bit. Uh, and this usually does a fairly good job, assuming you're not doing anything too crazy with this. Uh, I'll show you an example of too crazy in a second. Um, but assuming you're not doing anything super insane, uh, this usually does a pretty good job of preserving tolerances and also making your armor actually fit on, you know, a different arm type. Like, this actually looks ridiculous, but it fits the arm now. Um, You'll notice that if I delete this lattice deformer, it gets rid of the changes on the model. If you would like to keep those changes, I'm gonna. In this case, I put the deformer on the group itself, so I'm gonna select the group. If you did all the individual pieces, you would select all of the individual pieces. So select in this case again my group. Uh, go to edit, delete by type, and history, and you can see it's gotten rid of my lattice deformer, but all of the changes have stayed where they are. Um, so the other thing you can do, and this is. That, that's pretty much the tutorial. Usually I use lattice deformers for this. Uh, I'm just going to go through and show you a really quick example of how to not do this. Or like an example of when this will super mess up your uh, tolerances of different objects. So like in this case, um, I'm just going to grab this one point here. And you can see it does... If I move all of these at once, it does a pretty good job of holding things where they should be. If I push it over really far... Um, things do start to get, like crush a little aggressively, but usually what starts making it a little bit weird is when you're moving uh, individual vertices like this. So like, if I grab this one vert and I push that over far enough, it's going to start sort of making your mesh clip through each other. Um, let, me, let me hide this arm. Um, but you can see sometimes it's going to like just sort of start pulling things in ways you didn't expect. So usually I find it's good to where possible, uh, stick with sort of modifying groups of these at once. Um, you could also turn on soft select and hope that helps. Um, you can see it's taking some of the other ones uh, with this only one I have selected. Um, but usually, like I said, I'll sort of prefer to do whole groups at a time because it, it does a better job of holding me the proportions of things. Um, but yeah, so that's usually how I will do this stuff. So 
hopefully that helped. If you, for some reason, need to, like, I don't know. I don't know why on earth you would need to make armor shape like this, but now you know how to do it if you forever, or if you for some reason do actually find yourself in that situation. Peace. Or something. I don't know. That was super corny. I'm gonna go. See you guys.